My research career has taken me all around the world. But 10 years ago, there was an opportunity to start a new medical school in Western Sydney. And it was the research intensive nature and the research support behind that medical school that made it attractive for someone like me to come and work in the region. I would not have come here if I couldn't do research. The, th the fun part about research is the long-term investment or the slow burn to get a result. Each of these projects in translational research, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the evidence for something to change and you want it embedded in the service. At the moment, around the whole world, people are starting to treat gestational diabetes that can cause big day babies, can cause stillbirths, causes blood pressure to go up, preeclampsia, and a whole range of other really terrible things in quite a significant proportion of those people. There was a gap in evidence, and we're filling it. And we're actually the only ones filling it in the world in this way. We now have our a Samoan program, and the churches themselves through which we're putting this intervention, and they help guide us with putting into place things that we know will help people change their lifestyles. We introduced classes and workshops and walking groups and exercise groups. Not only did they become healthier and they became happier for it, but they went on to spread that within their own families. So you had mums and dads who had diabetes learning how to take better care of themselves and then showing their children, families who came to us and said thank you because your work here has helped us become healthier, become happy and work towards a future where our children are healthier and our children are happier. I'm a sports fan and a researcher. I was a huge football fan growing up. It was when I lost my dad in 2007 that football became more than just football. Um, it now really connects me to my family. I'm working with a couple of key community partners, including the Canterbury Bank Sound Bulldogs and the South Western Sydney Primary Health Network. We're working on a men's health program called Active Breed, a 12-week men's health program that engages male football fans through their passion for footy. We also educate men about physical activity, nutrition, mental health and violence prevention. We don't just want to be living longer, we want to be living better. We want people to be as healthy as they can for as long as they can and reduce that risk of chronic disease, which is increasing exponentially, particularly in, in Western Sydney. Seeing them with their families and, and seeing the impact that it has had on them, it's, it's had such a profound impact on me and that was kind of unexpected. The work that my team and I do looks at trying to understand new ways to diagnose and treat dementia. Having a new memory clinic where patients can access new treatments will really revolutionise care in Australia. Dementia affects nearly half a million people. It's the leading cause of disability and it's the second leading cause of death in older Australians. It takes them up to five years to get a diagnosis, which is unacceptable when all of the evidence suggests that if we get in there early enough, then we can detect people, treat people and then delay deterioration and most importantly improve quality of life. I'm an infant researcher at the Baby Lab. The aim of our work is always to understand development and how we can give these kids a better start to life. Babies can't actually tell us what they're thinking in those first couple of years of life, but their behaviours can tell us what they're thinking. The way that you communicate with your infants early in life shapes their language development. And kids who have better language can go on to perform better in school and to have better lifelong outcomes because they know how to communicate with other people. We know from Baby Lab that that infant directed speech style that you use when you talk to a baby is really important. So if you raise the pitch of your voice and exaggerate it, then you're going to enhance their social and emotional development as well as their language development. I'm looking at the role of non-invasive brain stimulation uh, and its ability to treat or prevent chronic pain. We use something called transcranial magnetic stimulation to send messages from the brain down to the spinal cord uh, and pick up those responses to that stimulation in the muscle. Uh, and that can give us an idea about uh, optimising our treatment uh, for those painful conditions. 
the one sentence pitch is the more funding we have, the more we can do. Absolutely. My principal interests in research are in bowel cancer and in uh, the use of minimally invasive surgery and in particular robotic surgery. Now you've got 3D vision, remote controlled with hand-like instruments inside the patient. And that's just the beginning of robotic surgery. It's still very much in its embryonic stage of development. But in bowel cancer, surgical technique has played a pivotal role in changing and improving patient outcomes. We're here to make people's lives better. We're here to make them healthy. The reason to fund research is because if you do have philanthropic capacity, you would be addressing uh, issues that are relevant to your community, to your neighbours, to your children, to your grandchildren. For each dollar, you get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars back. You, you feel good and the world feels good. <laughs> Thank you.